Well, hey there, guys and gals. Jack Spirico here from the Survival Podcast. I wanted to talk to you today about my new favorite bait in freshwater, shrimp that's been salted. Now, I have been using shrimp mostly as catfish bait when it comes to freshwater for my whole life. And I grew up uh, kind of split between Pennsylvania and, and Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, my youngest years I spent down in Jacksonville. And we did a lot of fishing at the beach and we did a lot of fishing in the uh, river, which was, depending on where you were, it was either salt or brackish. And so we used shrimp a lot there uh, for saltwater species. You know, anything croaker and whiting, bluefish, speck trout, I mean, just all across the board, everything eats shrimp in the ocean. And that led me. Uh, to start using you know, leftover bait shrimp for uh, bullhead and channel catfish. And it worked really good. The problem was when you had smaller fish, they always stole it, especially when you were reusing it. Because let me explain something to you about shrimp as a whole as to what happens to its consistency when you go to the store and you buy shrimp. If it's never been frozen, you can freeze it once. It'll be okay after you freeze it, but you're done. If it was flash frozen, meaning it came out of the water, it was processed however they process it, and they froze it, it's almost as good as fresh when you defrost it the first time. Your freezer cannot freeze food at the speed that commercial freezing happens. And it's why sometimes people say their fish gets mushy or whatever, it's because it takes a certain amount of time for that fish to freeze. And that slow freezing process does not preserve quality the way that instant freezing or damn near instant freezing often does. Now, one way you can help this, same thing I'm about to show you with the shrimp, but for a totally different reason, your, your fish that you're gonna freeze, put a little bit of salt on them and let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. It'll pull some of the moisture out. You're about to see how dramatic that can be. You don't wanna do this with the ones you can eat though. And then you have them almost at freezing temperature, but we, the freezing process hasn't started package them in straight away into the freezer, they'll get frozen solid much quicker that way. And a lot of your delicate fish, like for instance, with salt water, people eat whiting and they're like, it's mushy, it's just not good texture or whatever. They eat it fresh like it's amazing, so you can't freeze it. If you do what I just said, you can, and it'll be fantastic. Again, you'll never replicate what a commercial flash freezer can do that will take something from not frozen to frozen in about 15 minutes, frozen solid. You just don't have that capability at home. Anyway. So you get mush when you defrost uh, something, and it's when you refreeze it, that's when you get a lot of mush. And this is why so many people have poor results with keeping bait on when they're using dead shrimp, because it's been frozen multiple times. Also, when you go buy bait shrimp at the bait shop, and I'm not talking live here, I'm talking about dead shrimp, you actually pay significantly more to get a significantly less valuable product to you as a fisherman. Here's why I say that. So when shrimp is being used for bait shrimp, it's not the same shrimp you eat. It hasn't been handled the same way. They don't get as much money for it from the, the boat, right? From the, sh the fisherman standpoint. Uh, so it's usually kind of leftover stuff that wasn't handled right, whatever, uh, or it's just lower quality and it was set aside as bait. And they don't worry about no damn flash freezing because it's not for human consumption. It's some guy's gonna buy it and stick it on a hook. So why do you care? So it just doesn't get cared for as well. And a lot of times in transport, it doesn't have the same standards. It can actually thaw and refreeze and who cares, it's for bait. Well, that's why it's all mushy as shit. And then half of what you're paying for is the head of the shrimp, which doesn't really make that great a bait. So where do I get my shrimp for bait? Walmart. Now I'll do it any grocery store, depending on what's available. What I've found is the frozen shrimp at Walmart is as good or better quality for bait, not for me to eat for bait than anything else on the market, and it's flash frozen. So even if you're using it fresh, it's as good as it's gonna be as, as, as dead shrimp cut bait, right? But it can't be as good, and this isn't gonna look real nice at first, but it can't be as good as this. See all that water? That This is the third batch I've done in this, and I need to drain that water, but that gives you an idea how much water came out of those shrimp. So there's no trick to doing this. All that you need to do, okay, is take your shrimp and put it in some sort of container and then cover it with salt. See, it's salt, that's all it is. It's cheap kosher salt, all right? I mean, this is about as cheap as it gets because all I'm doing is making bait. 
it's hard for me to convey to you just how much difference there is here, but this is almost like rubber. It's tough. It's been in the salt, I think about four days. Usually it takes about a day to get this way and it only goes so far. I mean, you can just leave it there, but I don't wanna take this fish and all wet and nasty like this. So what I'll do with this now is I will pull it all out and I will actually lay it on a piece of paper towel uh, just to take some of the excess, the surface moisture off of it. And then I will just put this in a trusty zip top bag uh, label the date on it so I know I like to use my my oldest bait first but this is the last freaking year in the refrigerator now I mean this is this is preserved and I'll just when I go fishing uh, these come tail on and pre-peeled that way I don't have to peel them myself I go ahead and leave that shell on if your shrimp have shells on them peel them before you do this trust me um, but I just throw them in there and I will tell you this too you see how much water comes out of there you see that all right, when you defrost these things, there's gonna be a bunch of water in that bag. Don't just dump them into the container. Dump all that water out, then add your shrimps, and then cover them in salt, and you will get this wonderful bait. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Let me clean my hands off and turn the camera back up so I can look in the eye when we talk about this. I have been using this now, and one of my favorite fish to fish for salt all over me. One of my favorite fish to fish for, for my backyard ponds, to stock my backyard ponds, is little bullhead catfish. And I like to go catch six, seven inch bullheads, and I know where to get tons of them. And they are bait stealing little, little twerps, right? So they are bait stealers, and when you use fresh shrimp, the best you can get, never frozen, cut in little pieces, a lot of times, when you're fishing for, for bullheads, even if you're looking for bigger fish, if the smaller ones are around, you see that rod tip go, tip, one time. You know, okay, I'm getting a bite. Five minutes go by, nothing happens. You reel it in, it's gone. It's gone that quick. I've caught four or five small bullheads on a single piece of bait. And then eventually, because it's been hit so much and hammered so much and used so much, kind of the stink and the smell and the flavors, I guess, gone. And they stop biting it and I take it off and throw it away. I've never done that with fresh shrimp or frozen shrimp without salting it. And is it only good for bullheads? No, friends. It's good for anything eat shrimp. I have not noticed any less activity, any less, you know, willingness to bite this stuff than fresh at all. And what sold me finally on doing it was using a product called Fish Bites. And I'm like, well, if they'll eat that, then I can't see why they wouldn't eat this. I was hesitant to try this over the years because... You know, growing up, I also end up at times where you end up getting shrimp from the store and you end up getting cooked shrimp before you know better and nothing seemed to want to eat it once it's cooked. So I've always kind of felt like if we alter that kind of fresh shrimpy thing going on that we would, you know, turn off the action. This works great and not just on little bullheads, like I said. It works great in salt water. There's a dude, uh, his channel's called Hey Skipper. He's actually selling salted bait. Uh, why you would buy salted bait from someone else when it's so easy to make. I mean, he's got some kind of weird clam or something. He gets from Canada, maybe that, but uh, shrimp. I mean, you can just do it yourself, but I'll, I'll link to his channel so you can check it out. Um, he's a guy I found out about doing this from a couple years ago. And since I started doing it, I don't want him to do anything else. And it works good enough. I just recently uh, pu published a little video, a few minutes, uh, a few seconds actually, uh, processing a channel cat where there was a six inch bullhead inside a six pound channel cat, he ate it, and I just thought it was cool, so I put it out there. And I got these big, in fact, let me show you, I haven't even cooked it on yet. I've got these big, beautiful steaks out of this catfish. I've still got this much after having eaten quite a bit of this. I need to freeze some of this because my buddy David ain't gonna be able to come by this weekend. I promise to save him some, because boy, if you ain't ever eaten grilled channel catfish staked out like that, and I'm talking, you need one that's about six pounds or bigger to make it worth staking them that way. You cut them about an inch thick, Chef Paul's black and redfish season on them, you grill that, and I'm telling you, it'll stand up next to cobia, and cobia might be one of my favorite fish in the world. If something happens to those cats when they cross that bridge from about four pounds to six, and it stays that way up till about 12. I think once you get much over 12 pounds on a channel cat, you probably need to put that one back and let it keep making babies. But that six to 12 pound range, that is yum city. And uh, you know what I caught them on? That right there. So channel cats, blue cats, 
uh, bullheads, all three species, etc. This is a go-to bait. And you surf fishermen that are fishing for whiting and stuff like that, and you're using cut bait, give this a try. The hookup ratio is insane. I'd say fishing for those little bullheads, and they're, they're about the bait stealing us little twerps that, that exist on the planet, or little bullheads, because there's really about 50 of them out there, and they're doing this. That's what's going on if you had an underwater camera. Um, I would say I would, I would catch one for every five baits. Now I would say I will lose my bait once for every 10 uh, attempts. So out of 10 attempts, I'll get nine fish if I don't end up with that kind of, if I take out those arbitrary things where you're catching this, you know, using the same bait over and over again. Uh, but I'll catch about nine fish for 10 baits versus one for five. That's not a little difference. It's a big difference. Give this a try. Um, don't let it intimidate you. There ain't nothing to it. Yeah, it's not really a how-to video. It's more a why video and showing you what it looks like. But what I'm going to probably do in the future, the next time I make a batch, I'm going to take and I'm going to save two that I'm not going to not going to do this with. I'm going to leave one frozen and I'm going to defrost it right before the video to show you what it's like when it has just been defrosted. I'm gonna take another one, let it thaw out, I'm gonna refreeze it and let it thaw out again and show you what that looks like. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be able to do with both of them. More so the second one than the first, but both of them, I'm gonna be able to take my fingers like this and squeeze like I'm squeezing right now. And it's gonna go and mush. Guys, if I was doing that to your hand, you'd tell me to stop. I'm not saying I can't crush it. I'm saying that, look at the color of my finger. Do you see the color of that finger right there? Right. And look at the bait. It's badass. And it's not as tough as you'd think. It's not like really more like rubber. It feels like shrimp. It just feels like really firm flesh shrimp. Give it a try. I think it'll change things for you if you're a bait fisherman.